Hi everybody, welcome back to Philosophy Media. So before I get into details, I'd just like to mention how much I love Debian, especially with the GNOME desktop. I've been using GNU slash Linux now for almost 10 years, and solely Debian for about the last five. After I initially installed it, I don't think it was a week after that before it was on all my systems. Uh, Debian is known to be extremely dependable. It's fast, uh, open source, uh, well, mostly open source still, and lightweight. And not really quite so much lightweight anymore, but what is? And that was then, but this is now. And see, as I'm gonna be doing a fair bit of uh, morning complaining throughout this video, I prepared a short slideshow of some pictures of some happy animals to help lighten the mood. And maybe I should just switch to that now. So as you probably already know, the new version of Debian has been released, uh, codenamed Bookworm, and the, and the reviews couldn't be any better. Uh, everybody and their grandmother just loves this release and can't stop talking about how nice it looks. Uh, the new kernel, which to me I thought would be great. Uh, being such a new kernel, I thought all my hardware would just work out of the box, uh, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Uh, but at least it's a new kernel, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be much easier to set up. I thought it was super easy anyways. It always has been. But of course, you can't forget about those hand gestures and those rounded corners, uh, which is really what's important, right? Uh, which we already had. I think it's mostly just window users. I thought this was a new thing. But now the corners on the windows and in the, in the, uh, the task bar or the drop down activity menu, whatever you call it, are just ridiculously huge. And I can't understand if you were designing this operating system to run on a uh, on a desktop. It seems more like it's designed for a tablet or a phone. But being a, uh, a desktop distribution, I'm assuming it should run in a desktop. So I don't understand why it looks like that with the huge rounded corners and all that stuff. But and a couple things I did find wrong with it too or especially with the uh, the windows itself, like the decorations, the close buttons, and yeah, a couple other things don't seem to work. I'm pretty sure that's a Wayland issue, uh, but we'll confirm that in a couple of minutes here. And yeah, unfortunately I haven't found all of its new features to be that exciting, as they seem to come at the expense of better, more efficient, and less buggy software. A prime example of this would be the disappearance of QE, the QEMU package from the distributions repositories, which is essential for running virtual machines that utilize the kernel modules. Uh, this would be one of the biggest advantages of using Linux in the first place, is just for this type of virtualization, as it uses the, uh, the machine's hardware resources far more efficiently, almost to the point where, different, where the difference between it and the real hardware can't even be made. And they just toss it out. And for what? Uh, to make room for extra rounded corners, I guess. Or maybe to create a GUI application that a user, so a user can click on a button and instead of having to go through the painful process of opening up a terminal and entering a command or clicking on a menu box in some setting somewhere. I couldn't be more amazed at what people are willing to give up for convenience. Oh, and that brings me to Vert Manager. Um, not only does it randomly disconnect from the internet, it also takes a host connection with it. And this isn't in bridge mode either. I can understand if that were the case that they may conflict. Um, but what's going on here, I'm not quite sure. I've done a ton of research online trying to find a solution for it, and I can't find anything. So if anybody knows why this is happening, uh, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Because uh, it's really starting to bother me. But the thing that bothers me most, of course, is the missing KVM module. Because uh, without that, the virtual machines are pretty much useless. And they found the only way to get that is to actually jump on a, an older version of Debian and then use that repository to download the package, uh, throw it on USB, and then install it on the, uh, on the host machine that I'm trying to get going. Uh, because they just removed that package from the repositories. For what reason? Like I said, I have no idea. Uh, but it's a critical package. It's gone. And I'll just never understand why they removed it. But uh, 
yeah, with all that said, though, I think I'll maybe just jump over to Virtual Machine now and I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. So here we have the login screen. And if I click on my username here, uh, it gives us our uh, gear icon so we can uh, choose our uh, choose our display server. And right now you can see I have it on Xwork because I was trying to get things working. Um, but the default right here is GNOME, which uses Wayland. So I'm just going to select that. And I'll log in here. And see what happens. And why it opens up to the uh, activities view. Uh, right off the bat, I'm not quite sure. You think it would just go right in the desktop. Yeah, not a big deal, it's just kind of strange. So let's click on the desktop to open it up. And one of the first things I'm noticing here is the resolution. Uh, you can see it's not going all the way to the edges of the screen. Uh, I'm almost positive that's another Wayland issue because uh, I have had that previously on uh, other distributions. And then when I went back to Xorg, it was fine. So I think that'll fix it. Uh, but the main thing I am concerned about though are the window decorations. So say if I open up, say, the terminal, it'll open. There we go. I'm up here where the X is. If I try to click that to close it, it just activates this hamburger menu down here, or right here. Uh, instead of closing the window, which obviously isn't ideal. So the only way I can close this window is either to hit type exit, because I'm in a terminal. Uh, but if you're not in a terminal, the only other way would be to, to go up to the panel, uh, click the... Uh, application icon and then select quit and you're out of there. Uh, one thing I did notice too is uh, you probably all did also was the terminal wasn't in dark mode. And if I open up settings, you can see right here I have dark mode selected, but it's not applied to all the apps. Uh, this window it obviously is, but there's quite a few uh, applications that uh, don't have dark mode enabled. So if we get rid of that, maybe try to open up Terminator. Yeah, you can see the same thing. Uh, not enabled. Uh, which isn't a big deal. I don't think that's a Wayland thing this time. Um, I think that's just fun something funny with the, uh, the, the uh, desktop environment. So if I quit this now, uh, we can fix that by opening up Tweaks. And go to Appearance. And then this is the setting we want right here, legacy applications. We just want to switch that to out of way dark. Uh, this setting is normally up top here. So it was a little confusing when I first came in here to look for this setting, I couldn't find it. I just gave up and I said, oh, heck with it, it's not here. Uh, and then it started to frustrate me more. So I came back, had another look and uh, there it was, uh, it's down here. So just in case you're wondering, yeah, it used to be up here. But now without selected at dark, I and close this and then if I open up the terminal yeah there's our dark theme so that's definitely better and I'll close that and I'll try Terminator again yeah and that's also dark theme too so I guess next we just have to fix this resolution here uh, the window decorations and should be a little bit better off so to do that, we're gonna to have to sign out and then sign back in again with Xorg instead of Wayland. Um, but as you can see here, I don't really have any way of signing out uh, because this button right here doesn't seem to do much. If I click the power button, it should uh, drop down a list of options. But if I do that now, uh, we just get this blurred out background that seems to go into uh, some kind of suspender sleep or whatever. Um, but it doesn't give us any option to power off the machine or restart. So unfortunately what we have to do is just uh, sign back in. And then you can either use the uh, the terminal, uh, not the file manager. Oh, which ni looks nice though. And I keep going to close that with the, uh, with the button there, but it doesn't work. So if I open up the terminal, Uh, to uh, restart, you can say sudo systemctl reboot or just sudo reboot will probably work. Well, I think what I'll do for now is I'll just use my virtual machine here 
and just select reboot. And after that, we can uh, select Exorg and hopefully those issues should be resolved. I don't know if I'm just biased today too, but this seems a lot slower than usual. This full screen again. And I'm gonna select this guy down here. No amount of eggs work. Goodbye, Wayland. Uh, that's kind of weird. It's like it uh, didn't clear the cache. Remember a bit of our last session. And uh, if I click on the desktop here, yeah, there we go. We can see our resolutions better. And now let's see if we can uh, make use of the window decorations. And I got that in workspace too. So if I click on the X here, oh, lo and behold, it closes the window. So that solves that. And now my main concern are Python frameworks. Uh, I had a heck of a time getting these going. If you develop uh, Python, uh, you're definitely going to need them, either probably Flask or Django. And yeah, this is definitely a lot more, uh, involved a lot more steps than it did on previous versions. Um, many of the uh, packages were missing from the repositories uh, for both the distribution and PIP3, which is the package manager for Python 3. The PIP3 install or download was about half the size it normally is. Uh, it was 40 megabytes, it's normally around 90 which makes me think it's been cut in half and then some, which is very troubling when you take into account that errors don't always tell you that they're a result of a package being missing. Uh, sometimes either the script won't run or the absolute worst case scenario is you just don't get an error message or anything. Um, yeah, which is not great at all. <laughs> and I guess the second issue I would have would be with uh, Python 2. Um, it's just not on the system, which is to be expected because it has been depreciated for quite a while now. I'll give them that. Uh, but it does break quite a few of the older applications. And which wasn't a problem, say, with Debian 10 because it also had uh, Python 2. It was just like a minimal install. So it was kind of there if you needed it. And uh, the workaround here, I guess, would be to install the Python minimal package, which is Python 2 which will work great for getting the applications uh, working in no time. But unfortunately, it changes your default Python version on your system from Python 3 to Python 2. And doing that uh, throws a monkey wrench in so many things. It just causes absolute havoc. And to change it back to Python 3 after that happens, I used to be just one command. It was really simple and quick to do. Uh, but now, of course, that command doesn't work anymore because the module that ran it just doesn't exist. Uh, which kind of sucks. So there's that. But one of the really uh, big things that gave me issues was I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get older Python environments to activate uh, in this new distribution. So if I created the environment with a different distribution or even just an older version of Debian itself, uh, when I try to activate it in this one, it wouldn't work. Um, why that is, I'm not quite sure. It could be because the environments that I created before were created with virtual ENV. Uh, when I try to run, uh, run that package on this install of Debian 12, um, they just, they, uh, um, they won't activate whatsoever. So actually what I have to do is I have to create a new, brand new environment with VENV and then copy all my files over from my older environment to the new one and then install all my PIP modules in the new environment. And I can't find out why we'd be doing this other than the fact that the uh, Debian 12 just doesn't support virtual ENV, ENV anymore or at least the way it used to. Because uh, when I switched everything over to uh, VENV, everything worked fine. So 
just little things like they're not a big deal. It's just you expect stuff to be there that has always worked in the past. And then the next day it's gone. So it, uh, yeah, it definitely gets frustrating to say the least. Which I later found out may be a result of a bug or a conflict between virtual ENV and the new, uh, the new release of Debian itself. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is for now, I guess. So if you're developing Python with uh, Debian 12, I think you're better off using VENV instead of virtual ENV, which has always worked in the past, doesn't now. Um, yeah, that's just the way it is, I guess. And I'm starting to think that if you're a developer, you may want to stay away from this release completely, as many of the packages required will either be missing or not even the repositories at all. Uh, what I've done is manually just download all the dev packages and pip packages that I need uh, from an older release of Debian. I'll put them onto a thumb drive and then come back over to the new version of Debian and then install them that way. Uh, Cause you're not going to find them in the repositories. So yeah, you're just going to have to uh, revert back to an older system and get them from there. And then up next, we got some vert manager issues. Uh, I think the main one I already told you about is that it's missing the uh, the KVM module, uh, which really sucks. But like I just said, you just have to go back to an older version of Debian, uh, download it from that repository with the command apt download, whatever the package name is, uh, throw it on a USB, and then bring it back to your new installation. And yeah, then after that, you should be able to install uh, Vert Manager. Because I noticed all the other packages in the repositories were there. It was just the critical one that interacts with the kernel module itself that wasn't. So yeah, you definitely need that. And uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know whether I'm just being biased again, but I just thought it was a lot slower as compared to when I had it on my older install. And that's one of the reasons too why I've uh, switched back to an older version of Debian. Uh, it was just because the virtual machines didn't run, I didn't think nearly as well. And these all could be little things that could be ironed out in the future. But yeah, again, it's just more work for when I didn't think I'd need to. So, especially when you're getting a newer kernel and everything, you think that uh, things would just run smoother, but that's just not always the case. So to do a bit of a recap, uh, perfectly working applications are either removed or replaced by stripping them down until a point they're almost useless uh, in order to have extra rounded corners and more point and click options. Uh, my problem with that is if, uh, that's what people want. Uh, maybe they should just stick with Windows or Mac. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. And uh, why are there so many well-known YouTubers out there uh, shouting about how great this release is? Uh, do they actually do more than just stare at wallpapers and HTOP all day? Same thing with snaps and flat packs. Nobody I know wants, the, wants that crap on their system. Uh, but yet you see so many people promoting them. Um, to me, it just feels like a redundant mess. Like, why would I want a bunch of the same packages installed in the same system? Uh, a, I just, none of it really makes any sense to me. Like, I kind of get it that everything's in a sandbox and all the dependencies are already in there. Um, but installing a missing dependency is just as easy as saying sudo apt install whatever the dependency name is. Uh, and you're good. And then if that fails, because that dependency needs another dependency, uh, the error message will tell you. And then you just install that dependency. Uh, then you keep going until uh, your application just works. Which sounds like a tedious, long, boring process. Uh, but that really only takes about five minutes. Yeah, I'd say about five minutes at most. I actually did that whole process for, uh, uh, or did that process for an entire operating system. Uh, because I wanted to be able to create my system just the way it is now without the use of any repositories whatsoever and do it all locally. And that took a few hours, but that's for an entire system. So to do it for one or two packages shouldn't be that hard at all. But yeah, sorry, I could go on and on about uh, sandbox containers and immutable, immutable systems, but yeah, that'll just turn into an even larger rant. And uh, 
The uh, main thing that really bothers me is these distributions these days just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm almost kind of starting to feel, well, we're just not getting anything from it. It's uh, slowing down our systems. I just had to put in more RAM uh, into my computer. And I think I'm at, uh, yeah, just 16 now, but 16 gigabytes of RAM back in the day was just such a huge amount. And I don't feel like I'm getting a whole lot more for it. And it seems like the more RAM you use, the more this, or the more RAM you uh, install, the more the system uses. So even just five years ago, Linux was so much faster, customizable, uh, lightweight, and had far more options available, uh, especially for animations, like even just window effects and stuff like that. Uh, it was just amazing how much more you could do with your system. And you think as time goes on, that would improve, but yeah, I don't know. They just keep getting heavier and heavier and um, we got more shiny stuff now, but all the functionality and stuff is slowly disappearing, now, which is disappointing. So normally this is where I would probably apologize uh, for saying something like this, uh, for being so negative and uh, I guess I should say that everything is great and start begging for clicks and money. But I'm going to skip all that and just enjoy my outdated version of Debian 10 and write it out as long as I, as long as possible. And then most likely make the switch to, uh, I don't even want to say it, but uh, to BSD or something. Uh, another thing I don't understand is all the pressure to keep everything updated. If a package or application is done, it's done and it doesn't need to be updated or maintained. Uh, I feel it's a really simple concept, but yeah, I just keep hearing update, 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 and I'm really starting to get sick of it. Um, I guess some of that would apply to your distribution as well. If people are so pressured on keeping everything up to date, they probably wouldn't uh, Yeah, mind dishing out money each month for a uh, subscription or something like that. But. I guess to each their own. And I think that's it. I should probably shut up. And uh, before I uh, insult too many people out there, uh, that wasn't my intention. I'm just uh, getting really frustrated with how bloated these distributions are getting. And and it seems like we're losing functionality on either end. I'm not sure why that's happening, but yeah, I just wanted to make this video invent. Um, hopefully there's some other people out there that feel the same way I do. I have so please let me know in the comments and it may possibly save me a, uh, a visit to a quiet place where I get to draw all day. So on that note, take care and hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.